Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, Episode 13. Thoughts? This episode is called One of Us, Google Gobble, Google Gobble. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to, including this episode. No spoilers for anything MCU in this video. For anything that happened after this episode first premiered. So, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers, and I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive into the episode. So, yeah, we meet Carla Faye Gideon, or KFG, and, you know, with those fingers, you thought she'd be great at using her toes. I do quite enjoy her closing the door in their face and yeah Zabo is proving to be quite dangerous and yeah you know they, they take the thing off and she has Freddy Krueger fingers very cool idea and yeah you know he points out together we are a force to be reckoned with and yeah, Sky with with Coulson, you know, she's back to making jokes and and being like this, yeah, cheery, chipper person. And you know, yeah, Coulson says she's acting like everything will be back to normal. And let's see. yeah, Bobby and Simmons talk about Fitz. And you can understand why Gemma is struggling to forgive him. And yeah, we see that Mac did take Lance away. Ha ha he he ho ho. And Lance is engaging his care in his characteristic just He's not great at at holding in his his emotions when something and just he actually yells at Mac, "Oh, are you talking to Bobby? Tell her I take it back when I all those times I said don't die out there." Just wow. And yeah, you know, they talk about we work for a different shield. Ours is not round. Ours is, you know, the, the shape that it used to be. And, yeah, we learned that May was married to Dr. Andrew Garner. Very, always good to see Blair Underwood and something. And, yeah, just, you know, really, really good. The, the conversations between them you know you can understand both like how they did you know fall in love and do still like each other even if they don't want to be together anymore and also like the kinds of things that did end up driving them apart you know there's actually not very much they they don't share a huge amount of screen time but we get a very strong sense of what they were like both you know we see the things they say, we see how they say it, and we see the things they don't say. You know, May asks, aren't you a little girl old oh, aren't, <laughs> aren't you a little old for girlfriend pictures? Yeah, sometimes my brain skips a couple of words and my tongue can't keep up. Aren't you a little old for girlfriend pictures on on your desk? And at first he won't say, and by the end of the episode he's like, you know, that the girl in the picture on my desk is a reason for me to not be here, you know. And yeah, we see Zabo and the gang break into this psychiatric hospital and they even they make sure to wave to the camera. You know, they could easily have covered their faces, but Zabo wants to be recognized. And yeah, Sky is really not a fan of the shrink until she hears that May was married to her. And I will say those are some very funny 
questions, uh, you know, the... So, so yeah, someone did put it in the IMDb memorable quotes. Tell me about the wedding. I'm thinking May could go either way, understated or full bridezilla. She can be a control freak. Did you guys have actual conversations? You know, like pillow talk, or was it just like pillow stern looks? Very funny, and yeah, very accurate. I really like how that is just like the running gag like right from the start everyone you know people are joking about how May doesn't talk much and she just gives these looks and let's see. yeah very cool fight between the assassin and Bobby and yeah, they talk about Bachelor number two. And it is also, you know, yeah, you expect him to fully explain about both of them, but then, you know, as soon as he's explained about one of them and he's about to explain about the other, then the first one attacks. It was his cue. And, yeah, the... <laughs> May and Andrew, you know, talk in the kitchen, and Fitz doesn't want to interrupt and shares some gossip with Simmons, who is like, there's something that May doesn't excel at, and, you know, the fact that she's, like, laughing, and it's just, yeah. And I like the thing with, you know, you know, have you noticed the, have you noticed the way that he looks, he looks at her, she looks at him, something like, I've got eyes, Gemma. And we see Sky is dangerous when she has nightmares as well. You know, that used to be the thing. As long as she's unconscious, she, she's safe. But, yeah. <laughs> I like describing KFG as, a, you know, her past as a lifetime movie. And... Right, and and the Hannibal Lecter dude, I think David Angar is his is the character's name. You know, he's got the, the mask and he's like sipping milkshake through the straw because the straw does fit in the mouth hole. And you know, someone put in the um in the frequently asked questions for this episode. So the freaky group eating at the diner doesn't arouse anyone's suspicions. Three question marks. And yeah, you know, I I have to admit, when when Zabo like hit the table, I really did expect like reaction shots from him. nobody noticed. Yeah, I I don't know what that's about. I'm not gonna make excuses for that. And yeah, you know, he explains the reason he's so volatile is the chemicals that were used to, you know, yeah, increase his strength. Um, yeah, I, I quite appreciate the... Um, I think they did a really great job casting, like, really interesting people for these interesting roles. Like, um, you know, I'm glad they didn't just, like, put a bunch of... Like, it's, it's cliche to have the villains not be conventionally attractive, but, like, a lot of character in those faces. Just really great to see. You know, the... the Wendell Levi, the, the, the genius. You know, great face on him. Let's see. I'm, I'm very much in favor of putting... Yeah, people with, with a lot of character in their face. Giving them prominent roles. Now, let's see. Yeah, so... so Bobby and Coulson talk about Lance and, you know, the relationship, and she explains, I broke it off, which I guess means that Lance is in bed healing from that. Ouch. And, let's see, at least it wasn't the wooden leg, it was the third leg. But yeah, the, the... Um, right, the the really great, yeah, good, you know, I appreciate Sky and Andrew talking, I, I think they 
Got some great stuff there and great makeup on yeah, David Angar, you know, you've got the the lower neck has these like bruises and then the face you see it's like there's all this dried skin because no one has you know, they haven't dared take it off for a really long time and they're not like moisturizing, I guess, you know, whatever. So yeah. Really, really convincing there. And the effects on him using his powers, you know, with there's just there's just something the the lizard brain does not like when a mouth opens too much. And it's just it's really, really and they didn't have to do that. You know, that was extra work for the effects department. They could have had him just open his mouth normally. But they did that and I'm I, I really applaud it. It's it's excellent. And, you know, you have all the people dropping like flies, which, you know, that by itself is just like just Rehearse, just make sure everyone's ready to drop at the exact right, same moment because it wouldn't make sense for them to drop one at a time. But then you also have like a bunch of birds f going into catatonic state from the just, yeah, really, really awesome. And yeah, you know, Sky wants to go on the mission. May and Andrew are very much against it. And I really appreciate, like, Zabo goes full Saturday morning cartoon villain. He's like, you know, so, we're, you know, we're we're simulcasting this and the whole, it's just, yeah, you know, I, I quite appreciate such a theatrical villain. I, I would probably have a problem with it if every villain on the show was like that, but, you know, he's, yeah, it's far from all of them. And May points a gun at Sky, which is, of course, a very, very good way to get Zabo to not completely, you know, yeah, that's that's gonna get his focused attention. And then Gordon takes Zabo away. And we get some great fights, uh, you know, Bobby versus KFG. And, you know, very, very clever to have, you know, the, the you know, claw fingernails thing versus the, the steel batons. And, you know, you have the, um, yeah, May against uh, Francis Noche, you know, and and at one point she does like a tackle because they're on a football field. Just, you know, yeah, really, really great stuff. And I appreciate, you know, because he's so strong, we saw him bend steel bars like they were taffy earlier. Yeah, you know, she, it's not that he's hitting her and she's somehow tanking it. It's that she's avoiding his hits. And we've seen her do that before. You know, it's not not every fighting style requires that or focuses on that, but the ones she employs do. The one or several, you know. So yeah, very nicely done on that. And I, I appreciate you know Bobby tries to talk KFG down, saying you know you should turn yourself in, and she says. I tried that once before, you know, and this is, that's the problem with treating, you know, if, if a government treats people really harshly, you know, they, they, a lot of government people don't have a lot of empathy for the people they hurt, but this is what you get, you know, then people refuse to, to cooperate because they know what you do to them if they do. And let's see. Yeah, and, you know, it seems like Sky manages to get control of her powers, but then we learn she, were, she was just directing them inward, which, yeah. And, yeah, so Lance tells, uh, you know, yeah, Mac tells Lance, we are working for the real S.H.I.E.L.D., and Gordon says, you make too much noise to, to Zabo. You are not one of us, and it is not up to me to decide what will happen to you. And Zabo is legitimately shaken up, and also just the fact that like they put him in this room where he could have just sat on a chair at a table, but he destroyed everything. 
and Gordon opens the door and he's like, so, you done? You know, it's like, we're not, the, the fact that you're destroying everything around you does not make us scared of you. It, it just, you know, he's talking to him like a petulant child or something like, you know, do you feel better now that you threw your little tantrum, you know, kind of thing. So just, yeah. And yeah, really, really excited to see who Gordon reports to and what they intend to do to Zabo. And you can completely understand why they are frustrated with him. And yeah, you know, very comic booky. say that, you know, there's someone more important. You got to buy next issue to find out who and what they're going to do. And let's see. And it is also, like, it is very logical. You know, yeah, there is someone watching over, you know, these these people with the pterogenesis and this whole thing. Because otherwise, how did, how did S.H.I.E.L.D. not know about all of them already? So, some IMDb trivia for this episode. Oh, that is right. Yeah, part of this episode is set at Culver University where Bruce Banner hulked out in The Incredible Hulk, the MCU movie. And two of the villains recruited by Cal originally in Daredevil comics. David Angar, a.k.a. Angar the Screamer, first appeared in Daredevil number 100 from 73. KFG made her debut in Daredevil Redemption number 1 in 2005. Right, and yeah, this episode reveals that Fitz owns the Grumpy Cat mug from A Fractured House, the earlier episode. And, oh yeah, yeah, I thought I, I thought he looked familiar. Uh, Jamal Duff plays John Bruno in this episode. He also played a she an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. in Thor, who fights Thor. I knew I had seen that face somewhere before, yeah. He's great in that as well. Right, and yeah, the title One of Us is a reference to the 1933 classic film Freaks, about circus freaks. It's the line repeated by the freaks in the final scene. Along with Google Gobble and We Accept You. And... Let's see... Huh... Uh, Blair Underwood and Clark Gregg have previously co-starred as love interests of Julia Louis-Dreyfus on the, the New Adventures of Old Christine. Very cool. And let's see. The, um, oh, wow. Not very many IMDb quotes for, for this episode. Did May... Handle these or something, but yeah, the yeah, and and the you know the thing with uh, Andrew asks, okay, but why me? Is this guy that bad? And May says she's that good, a good agent. <laughs> I told her how to fire an automatic. Of course, she likes me. And <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to yes, yeah, so. The next, I should be able to cover an episode tomorrow when I will also do the weekly movie, Evil Dead 2. And, uh, yeah, so, until then, I will leave you with the, this excellent line by Fitz about May and Andrew. They're a bizarre pair. He listens for a living, and she doesn't speak.